Hey guys, welcome back to another video of Impact Generation. Welcome, I welcome you that you are, I really really appreciate that you're always here to watch me. Thank you so much and I'm so glad to be um, learning the word with you. Yes. Okay, so today we will be discussing on the topic that says, what does the Bible say about being judgmental? This topic, the reason I brought this topic is because I see that most people, most of us, we judge, we are too judgmental of people. We just see them and just say, mm, then we conclude on them. This person, I'm not going to like the person. No, this person is too proud. No, this person is this, this person is that. While you yourself, you're, you have your own, what will I say, um, your own, um, give me the word. <laughs> Your own bad side. Yes, that's what that's what it is. We all have a bad side. Everybody does. So you don't just look at somebody. You know that word that they said, um, don't judge the book book by its cover. Yeah. Though yeah, there's some people that you they are proud, they are this, they are that, yeah, but do not just go into the details. Know them first and if you don't want to know them, don't know them and don't judge them. Yes. Now Let's go into the video properly. Now, the Bible is clear that God does not want people to be judgmental. He doesn't want it. Christianity teaches that people do not have the entire picture as God does. I don't know if you believe that. God sees everything. God knows who is who. God, God knows what we've done or what we've not done. So it's not in your, it's not your duty, it's not your responsibility to say that somebody is this or somebody is that. No, that's not for us. Now, since humans' viewpoints are thought to be skewed based upon human limitations, people are not in a position to judge others well. We are not the best. You see, humans, we humans, are not the best, um, best candidates to judge other people or to, because we are not perfect. We are not made to be perfect. We have our own um, stuff too. So we're not, that is not our job. So don't do it. Now, but you see, Christians and God, you know, it teaches us that God taught us, you know, to actually um, have compassion and forgive one another. So if you, you don't have to be mean to people or this or that. No, that, that's not what we're doing today. Now, the first point we're going to be looking at today is what is the difference between judgment and hypocrisy? Judgment and hypocrisy. So many of us might say that, oh, 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 being an hypocrite and being judgmental is actually the same thing. I don't know if you believe people most people believe in most people don't I think that is it if you are judgmental you're an hypocrite because you yourself you're not perfect but then you're sitting removing somebody's um, stick instead of you facing the stick that has shook you in your own eyes I don't know if you understand that <laughs> the stick that is right there in your own eyes you're supposed to like monitor it and, and guide it yeah not that you you be busy, you know, going around looking for people who have sticks in their eyes. Oh, let me help you remove it. No. Now, the most direct message in the Bible against being judgmental is found in the book of Matthew 7, 1 to 6. Now, in that, um, in that verse, now, Jesus was trying to point out to people that, that judge... You know, that judge the speck of sawdust in another person's eyes when they are oblivious to the plank in their own eyes. That's what I've just said. You have your own plank, a very big stick. Yes, but still you leave that and then focus on another person's, um, you know, speck. When I say speck, it means like a tiny spot, you know. They have just tiny, but you see it all. But your own, you leave it alone. No, that is not it. No, you're not supposed to do that. As a Christian, as a child of God, yes, we call ourselves children of God. So are you a child of God? If you are, you're not supposed to do that. Being judgmental, according to the Bible, only makes people hypocrites because they focus on the fault of others rather than their own faults. That's what I've been trying to explain. I think we now get it. That is what hypocrites means. 
If you're an hypocrite, that is what you do. You judge people. Oh, she can't even dress. Look at that dress. Oh my God. But what are you wearing? Girl, dude, what are you wearing too? Yeah. So we move to the next point. Sin in the Bible. The Bible notes that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That is in Romans 3, verse 23. We all know that verse. We all, we all have sinned, but fall short, fall short of the glory of God. We know that, but still, we still go about doing what we're not supposed to do. Now, which means that nobody is in a position to be judgmental about another person's actions. You're not in that position. Yeah. You're not. Mm -mm. Like, for an example, a woman that, that just finished beating her child. There was this woman, yes. I saw her. She flogged that child. Oh my God. <laughs> I couldn't even take it. I was like, whatever, man. Let me just leave here. I don't want to say anything. But then, a friend, because it was in a church, you know, where my where I school, the church I attended, it happened there. And then the another woman was beating her own child. And this woman came. No, no, no. Ah, ah, ah you're too wicked. What's your problem? Why are you beating this? Ah. Like me and the other people that were there were like, this woman, like, what, what is your problem? You just finished beating, like, we're just discussing that. But this woman was beating her own child, then, like, flogging him. What? Why? No, oh, damn, man. You, you're not supposed, you can't do that. Like, just face your own business. That's what this life is all about. Face your business, and everything is going, is going to work, work out well. Now, <clears throat> though Christians believe Jesus did not sin, he nevertheless refrained from condemn, condemning the adulterous woman when others were about to stone her. Jesus instead invited the person who was without sin to cast the first stone. Now, in that um, Bible text, John 8, 11, uh, one, John 8, verse 1 to 11, yeah, sorry. In that Bible um, story, there is a woman that they wanted to stone to death oh, because oh, she sinned. She was an adulterous woman. She had done adultery. And you people now want to stone her. Then Jesus now said, okay, you will stone her, oh, but if you know that you have never sinned, come and stone her. No, come, come. That's the, that's the, that's the condition. You will stone her. But if you know that you have never sinned, oh, yeah, stone her. Stone her. Stone her. Nobody could come out. Why? Because we all are fall short of the glory of God. Simple as that. In one way or another, you've done something wrong. Even if not bad, something wrong. Something that is not right. Now, careful judgments. Now, in John 7, 24, the Bible wants to stop judging by mere appearances and make a right judgment. You see, when we make right judgments, we see that everything is just going to be simple and plain. And they tell you, oh, our life is just so simple. Yes, because you see beyond appearances. You see beyond situations. You see beyond that person. That is how it should be. Now we move to the next point. Consequences of judgment. This is where it gets tough. You know, we, like I said, most people do this, but do they really know the consequences of them being judgmental of people? I don't think they do. Now, the Bible wants judgmental people that they will be judged by the same measure with which they judge others. That is in Matthew 7 verse 2. The way you have judged somebody, that is how you know the kind of measure they will measure it were you straight to this person like <laughs> i'm trying to like make you guys understand in a very very simple or simplest form so they will, uh, they will measure it oh what do you mean when you did this to this person oh okay this is what we're going to do to you too as simple as that yeah so let's be careful there are consequences to these things now, Deuteronomy 7, 1 verse 17, I'm sorry that I'm saying a lot of Bible verses, I'm just trying to like make us like have, I don't know, an evidence of what I am saying. 
so you guys can take it very very serious now i say it suggests that judgment belongs only to god god owns it it is not our job no our job is to come to this world and live by his rules so you judging people is not your duty it belongs to god now rather than being judgmental the bible instructs people to have compassion and empathy for others if you don't want these consequences of judgment okay of, of being judgmental fix your own just have compassion on people yeah people some people are worse some people are bad some people are not doing the right thing it is not your business that is it it's not your business how should you look into everybody's business face your like i said there is a plank in your own eyes believe it or not that's the truth so leave the speck of sawdust of another person leave it alone let them know how to clear it they will know how to do their thing you to know how to do your own thing now the last point i want to talk about is the benefit of mercy now when you start having compassion on people and empathy what are the benefits mm -hmm. this is the sweet part what are the benefits of mercy now the bible says in luke 6 verse 37 do not judge and you will not be judged do not condemn and you will not be condemned forgive and you will be forgiven now viewing others with compassion instead of judgment according to the bible brings followers into better alignment with god's will that's what it does that's the benefit of mercy you start enjoying things that a regular person doesn't oh you want this to work here you want that to work here because even apart from okay let's leave christians and uh and bible and everything where people know you as you see beyond situations, you see beyond people, you don't judge them. People, you, you live your life here, yeah? only you face your business. People will favor you. That's just it. Things will come your way. Oh, they will even recommend you. Oh, I recommend her. She doesn't like stress. No wahala. That's the person you would like to work with. Or that's the person that you will want to give these gifts to. Those are the benefits of the mercy of God. And when it comes to your Christian life, you see that things are going smoothly, nicely, and you enjoy yourself. What other thing can be beautiful than that? You're just in this world and enjoying everything, every good thing that comes with it. Yeah. So that is it. That those are the benefit. Of, that is the benefit of mercy. So guys, I hope you understood this lesson. Yes. And I want you guys to show compassion and empathy to people and then you see what comes with it. You see the benefit of mercy, every good thing that comes with it. Do it this week and you guys will see. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.